of the soul i hope you're all well so if you've watched concert throwback episode two you would know that when i saw erica Badu live over was the support act for her i loved it and then over the years i've been listening to more and more of his music so i thought oh yeah i definitely want to go to one of his headline shows one day and i feel like if you grew up on British R&B or not even just British, just general R&B and soul and you're based in the UK, I feel like you definitely would have come across Omar and especially the song There's Nothing Like This. I feel like that's probably his most well-known and most popular song. And yeah, I remember that song from quite young. It felt good to be at the Jazz Cap again because I think the last time I went there was for Tidra Moses' concert in February 2020. If you haven't watched that video, I'd highly recommend it. It was a great show. So it was great to be back, good vibes, got my spot that I usually get. But I was thinking that I was running late because usually I'd say for these type of concerts, it's good to get there like at least like an hour and a half before um, doors open and I got there and it was less than an hour before doors open. Tell me why I was the only one in the queue. The barriers weren't even set up or anything yet. And then I could hear sound check going on. I was like, I thought I was running late. <laughs> in a way I'm happy because at least it didn't mean that I was like in a long queue. It's great to see that Jess Cow survived the pandemic as well because I remember they were doing a thing where you could kind of like donate. So I'm glad that they still survived. It's a shame like certain venues like Hideaway. I remember Omar even did a post about, I think he was like driving past it and his name was still on the venue, even though it's not even an active venue anymore because it did survive the pandemic. And I think that's just so sad. Hideaway was such a great venue. But yeah, my point is I'm glad that the Jazz Cafe is still here. It's an iconic venue and it will be forever. So the DJ's name was Greg. He was playing some tunes. He put me onto some new songs. I Shazam them. So I put the ones on the screen that I Shazammed. But I wanted him to play like more neo soul vibes as well. But it was more just like kind of old school. So. I feel so So the support act was Louise Golby. She seemed really cool, really nice and humble. I love how she shouted out the sound engineer as well as her band members. There was a percussionist and a guitarist. I wasn't really feeling the songs that she was performing, but I was more drawn to the instrumentalist. I just love watching musicians play. So Lee was on percussion and I don't really see much percussion at concert. So he was like right in front of me as well. So I was just like filming. And yeah, just watching how he was playing and like the sounds that he was making. I love how Louise plugged everything. You knew like how to find her on socials. You knew about her upcoming gigs. She also mentioned that she has a podcast called The Songwriters Podcast. And I really want to check that out because I don't listen to many music podcasts. The only one I listen to is Are We Live? Fantastic podcast, by the way. Check it out if you haven't. And that podcast actually put me on to The Man by Omar because I think I originally like skipped that song but then when it came up on that podcast I was like oh this is a bop but yeah anyway I want to listen to more music podcasts the songwriters podcast sounds like really interesting and yeah I definitely want to check that out check it out as well if you're into music podcasts or if you want to get into them I love that Louise also did a cover of Angie Stone's I Wish I Didn't Miss You I like that and because it's familiar you know the songs so I feel like subconsciously or more like inclined to enjoy the performance unless obviously it's like awful but it wasn't so i really enjoyed that cover We need to give Omar his flowers. This man is a legend. And even outside the jazz cafe, they had a sign. Let me just get up in my camera roll. Something like UK soul legend Omar. Yeah, it's like UK soul legend Omar live tonight. And I feel like that title is so fitting. 
like he is a legend we need to give him his flowers he's done a lot for like the uk soul neo soul kind of scene and he's collaborated with american artists he's had like crossover and he's just very talented and what i love about his music as well is that if you listen to the production you can kind of hear like reggae vibes in certain songs or bossa nova vibes in certain songs or other types of latin vibes in his music or like funky house soulful house vibes and all of those genres are genres that i absolutely love but even though he's incorporated all these different genres it doesn't seem forced like it seems natural you know when you see some artists cross over into different genres it seems like well this is a bit inauthentic like it's not organic at all it doesn't seem genuine but with him it just seems so natural like it's just a part of his sound and i love that he has tunes for days as well if you haven't listened to his whole discography i really recommend you do i even feel like i need to go back and listen to everything because i don't think i've listened to all of his work properly when i told people that i was going to see omar they're like oh he's still performing or oh omar like i haven't heard of him in a while so it's like people know about him and I'm almost like shocked that he's still going. And because I follow him on socials or like get notifications about concerts that he's doing, like I can see that he's actively touring and that he has longevity still. And I think that that's something that needs to be praised more in the industry. Like maintaining longevity as an artist, I think should not go underlooked. I feel like that's something everyone should aspire to because I feel like with some people, like they're just like, oh, I want that viral hit. Like I just want it, I want that song to blow, I want that album to blow. And they don't think about like the future because say if you are an artist and you do have that one song that blows and the rest of your work doesn't, are you gonna be able to tour? When you say, oh guys, I've got a concert, who's gonna wanna come and only hear like one song? Maybe you can do festivals or come out as like a um, special guest or something like that. But can you actually tour? And I always hear a lot of artists say how that is like the main way they make their money and that's their bread and butter. So to see him continue to tour and the longevity that he's had, I think that's just really amazing. <laughs> I wasn't even aware of this song until last night so I'm glad that it was part of his set. I didn't even know that Omar was Ghanaian either so that makes me like him even more. Shout out to all the Ghanaians out there. Everybody loves the sunshine and I feel like everybody loves that song such a classic and if you watch my Mary J Blige is my life documentary review and commentary you would know that um, she talks about that song as well and I talk about that song a bit more in that video so definitely check that out I just love like hearing what that song like means to different people. I'm glad that I got to experience it in a live setting with an amazing band and an amazing vocalist and Omar, oh, it was brilliant. And then I just loved like the ad-libs that he would do. So he'd be like, um, what does London love? Sunshine. And yeah, the band absolutely killed it. It was such a vibe, like you could just tell everyone was hyped and I just love how Omar got us involved and we were singing along. Oh, love, love, love. That's gonna be a clip that I watch on repeat. still salty that I didn't get to hear Omar and Erica perform that song together when I saw Erica live. I will never get over that. <laughs> never ever 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 get over that unless I end up somehow seeing them perform that song one day. It was so annoying. If you've watched the video, the concert for like episode two, I go into more detail about it. But yeah, 
I'm still salty, will forever be salty. At least I got to see Omar perform it live with his incredible band and he also brought out Louise to sing Erica's parts which was nice as well. Again, another vibe, you could tell everyone was just feeling the song. I really like that song because it makes you think about what you're thankful for. So there was a point in the show where Omar pointed out Deneo in the crowd. I was like, oh my gosh, Deneo's here. And then the drummer started playing like a funky house beat. I couldn't tell if he was playing a Deneo song or like a different funky house song. I'm not sure. But I was like, oh my gosh, is he going to get up on stage? Is he going to perform? Because I've seen Deneo perform before. I need to do a video on that like gig that I went to. And he knows how to get a crowd hyped. Like for real for real so i was getting excited i was like oh my gosh there could be a performance but there wasn't but omar did perform it's so next and that's a soulful house vibe so yeah he shut the place down again it felt like a party it was a vibe such a tune loved it <laughs> Such a talented band, the best live band I've seen in a minute. It just felt like so sweet, like, oh, so soothing, so chill. I loved it. On the bass, it's the border on Ray. So Gordon is obviously very talented, but I don't know, I just wasn't feeling the bass in my soul that night. Now listen, tonight is so special because for the first time in at least three years, I've been able to afford horns. <laughs> what a difference, what a difference it makes. It's amazing. We have Shanti. <laughs> Auntie killed that, so, so talented. I remember when I arrived in the venue and I was standing in my spot, I was thinking, oh, I haven't seen this equipment before. So when I saw the horns come out, I was so happy. I'm really intrigued to hear more about what that equipment does exactly, because I've never seen that. So yeah, I should probably do some research or if anyone happens to be watching this who knows what that does please do let me know in the comment section and it also like kind of broke my heart a little bit when Omar was saying how this is like a special show because it's the first time in about three years that he's been able to afford horns and it just goes to show like how hard this industry is and yeah sometimes like people just think oh if you're like a musician it's all glitz and glamour but it's hard, it's hard out here. I'm grateful that one, he could afford the horns now and that he actually used them as well because some people might be cheap and be like, I know getting horns could make my show better, but to save money, I'm just not gonna get them. But I like that he actually took the time out to include horns in his band because yeah, as he said, it did make all the difference. Horns are some of my favorite sounds, so it was great to hear. On the sax, Mr. Jim Hunt. Give it up! So I'd say saxophone and bass are my favourite instruments. If someone was like, pick between the two, I really don't know what I'd pick. So yeah, because I wasn't really feeling the bass, the saxophone had my heart throughout the whole show. I just thought it was meant to be like the music gods were looking out for me as they always do. And I feel like it was meant to be that I was directly opposite the saxophone. On the keyboards and the vocals and the flutes with the Lennox Cameron.
multi-talented artist and musician. We love to see it. I mean, keys, flute, vocals. That is very impressive. I wonder like how that feels like, if that feels really taxing or if it feels better because you're switching from like instrument to instrument or like mixing it up by vocals. Like I wonder if he finds it more enjoyable to be doing all three or if he finds it really draining. Yeah, be interesting to know. Mr. Wesley Joseph. Woo! Wesley killed it. You could feel that he was kind of like the backbone to the whole band. Like I thought he just brought the whole sound together. Please check Omar out if you haven't already. He even said that he has some new music coming out soon, so stay tuned. I'll link his socials in the description box. Also, I don't think I realized that Omar played keys as well. So obviously Friday was Friday the 13th of August, which is known as an unlucky day, but I had the best day. This is the best day that I'd had in a minute. The only critique that I would have is that you couldn't really see Alan on stage, but I don't think that's really any of their fault. I think Jazz Cav need to kind of get a slightly bigger stage so that when you have bigger bands, everyone could be in a position where you can like easily see them. Um, but again, maybe it's just the angle that I'm at because the people who were to like the left of the stage, like further left, you would see like Alan from a good angle. I wish Omar performed certain songs as well, but it's a good problem to have like, you do a whole set list and people are happy with the set list, but obviously you can't like please everyone. And he did do like 14 songs, I think, something like that, because I took the set list from the stage because usually like when I go to concerts and I'm like editing and planning the videos, I have to go back and like get the titles of each and every song. And sometimes I don't know the songs, so I have to like listen to the lyrics, Google them, find out the song title and it's long. But I was like, let me take this set list so that I don't have to worry about that. And yeah, he performed a lot of songs and a lot of good songs. If you haven't seen Omar live, make sure that you do if you have the opportunity to do so. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. And stay tuned for part two where there'll be the full concert footage with no interruptions. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.